Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Alvarez. I'm uh, working for Red Hat. Uh, for the past five years, almost six years already, I've been focusing mostly on, on uh, Neutron and OVN. And today, together with my colleague Luis, we're going to introduce you a new project, uh, OVN BGP Agent. And let's get it started. OK, so we're going to start with the why. Why are we starting a new project? So you've probably seen in the, uh, in the keynote uh, today and yesterday, there's been, we have seen a trend in the data centers that typically th we are seeing this very frequently, like the shift is towards uh, you know, pure L3 deployments where the layer two is normally just ending at the top of rack level. So beyond the top of rack, uh, everything is routed. And this is how the underlays are, are trending to. And we are seeing as well needs for scaling. Uh, typically, you know, in, we have seen this today as well, like not, not just increasing the number of nodes for, for, the, for the sake of it, but also having better maintenance, uh, better day two operations, and, you know, just usually having multiple smaller clouds versus a large deployment with a lot of nodes. This is something that is typically preferred as well. And we explored what is available upstream. And there's a couple of projects upstream that you're probably familiar with. Uh, one is Newton Dynamic Routing and um, Networking BGP VPN. Those are the two main projects available upstream. And there were some gaps there where we wanted to, to uh, you know, to explore how to close them. And we will walk through it a little bit later on uh, on the presentation. So we decided to, to start a new project, which is basically an, a building block that could serve to, actually it can be integrated in those two projects. Uh, we, of course, we open sourced it. So it's right now in the, uh, under the open dev umbrella. There's gonna be links at the end. Uh, and, and essentially, we, we, what we did in, is to start something, a proof of concept, just play around to uh, gauge the interest from the community and the users. And basically, all of you uh, can help you know, uh, with the future direction of the, of the project. And we did it under one premise, which is essentially not to, to be intrusive to any existing projects. We didn't want to do any changes either uh, to Neutron or Corobian. So we wanted to, to have something um, just, you know, from a deployment perspective and, and this agent that we were going to talk about today, uh, which is minimally invasive, so minimal changes. Of course, it has some gaps and limitations we're going to walk through it too and serve as a functional block for what is coming next. Uh, okay, so we'll start why. We want to move away of, of the layer two. So um, normally the, uh, the aggregation layer would be the demarcation point between the, the L2 and the L3 domain. And you know, there, there's uh, some issues with, with large broadcast domains, uh, like failure domains, or uh, you know, typically broadcast traffic, convergence, like you have a, a virtual IP, and it can be moved to uh, some other nodes, so there's going to be grad issue SARPs. There's going to be a lot of devices in the network uh, learning those, the new location of the, of the virtual IP. TCAM issues, memory in the devices. These are the typical layer two issues that you know, probably most of you are familiar and have experienced at some point. And there's a lot of protocols involved, right? Like uh, you know, for achieving bonding, uh, LACP, you need to configure LACP in the fabric you know, spanning tree port protocol, those usually extend beyond, you know, uh, VLAN, and they spread across VLAN stands, and they could cause a vast increase in the, in the traffic level, like broadcast, multicast, right? And I'm gonna walk really quick through this. And this is where we are trying to, to shift to. Um, essentially bringing routing all the way to the, to the lowest layer of the hierarchy, all the way to the top of rack, and down to the compute nodes. There's a small diagram here, but this is, this is a, you know, uh, kind of like a, how an MP chart could look. You would have your rack, and that is 
the L2 boundary and that you can host workloads from different clouds and, and interconnect them somehow. But essentially, the, the point here is that all the traffic will be routed down to the top of rack. And the advantages are, of course, reducing the, the, the size of the layer two domain, reducing, you know, therefore, the, the failure domains, faster convergence. We can achieve uh, load balancing. And, and you know, instead of using traditional layer two bones, we would be using ECMP, BFD for failure detection. And for this, we need to run some sort of BG, like routing, uh, dynamic routing protocol in the fabric. And what we are going to show is with uh, BGP is the protocol that we selected. And, and one of the advantages of using BGP is that most of the time, what, what we are seeing today is that BF, BGP is already being run in the, in the fabric. So it's kind of easy to, to uh, plug in there, right? Um, another advantage could be, you know, by doing this, avoid static configuration in the fabric. You don't need to go and configure static routes in the fabric and maintain them. Things like prefix delegation for IPv6 are a little bit too complex to implement. So this sounds ideal. Of course, there's, there's also some pitfalls, like with everything. You probably are familiar with the, with the outage last year, uh, October, I think, you know, when nobody of us could access Facebook or WhatsApp. And that was the DNS servers of, of Facebook. They were, they were disconnected, so the, the BGP routes were withdrawn. So the, the DNS servers were actually up and running, and they were functioning. But the, the routes were withdrawn, right? So there's, it is not free of problems. OK, real quick. It's a little bit messy slide, but uh, the point of this is to show you know, what are some of the benefits of, of having BGB running in your, in your OpenStack cloud. And you, you could have applications that live in different clouds, uh, so you achieve better resilience. You would have active, active. Basically, you are announcing the location of a virtual IP from two separate places, and the fabric will do its magic to um, to direct the traffic either to the one or the other. So that leads to disaster uh, avoidance and recovery. You can achieve geo redundancy, and essentially, you are avoiding normally L2 stretching and all those problems that come with L2 when you want to span across different sites or, or geographies. And so it's. It's about not like there was some, some <laughs> reference this morning of well, not just growing your cluster, but growing your cluster and spanning it across, you know, or taking it to the edge, um, spanning multiple, uh, multiple physical locations. Again, like easy for simple uh, day two operations. So usually it's going to be easier to operate a, a smaller cloud or drain, you know, just migrate your workloads from, from a smaller cloud. So we should simplify the day to operations. Um, and just uh, so Luis will deep dive in, in you know, to the actual uh, implementation details and, and flows. But we are not touching the east-west traffic. So OVN is still uh, into picture. And, and all the east-west routing keeps working on the overlay. So we're focusing mostly on, on workloads on provider networks and floating APs. Um, although we don't want to leave behind all the use cases like Tenant network advertisement with eVPN and whatnot, and we are relying on the on the BGP in the fabric, um, typically with the spinal leaf topology to connect for north south traffic. Uh, how we do this? So we chose FRR as the routing suite. So there's a lot of tools there. Um, we can do BFD. Well, Luis will dive into the details. Uh, what we are doing is we are uh, running a BGP speaker on each node. So the peer would be, typically would be the top of rack. Of course, it can peer with the DC gateway and advertise directly connected routes. So for the control plane, we need to have something. So we, we did it pretty much just at the deployment layer, um, create a loopback IP configuration that's going to be used to peer with the, with the top of rack, and, and just deploy in FRR, configure it, and setting up the agent. As I said, like no changes to Neutron or OVN or any configuration at all with those components. And for the data plane, we're relying on this BGP agent, which is connected to the OVN database. So it's actually, it's not OpenStack specific. We have done it agnostic. Of course, like the focus was OpenStack, but it just reads from OVN database. 
and it configures things to trigger a FRAR to advertise the routes. In the case of VPN, it will configure the, the VTAP endpoints for, the, for setting up the tunnels, and it will be in charge of redirecting the traffic uh, to and on from the, from the OPN overlay. And off to you, Luis. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to give a little bit more of details about the VGP uh, control plane, and especially the, the data plane uh, for VGP. I guess you are well aware already, but it's a dynamic routing protocol, basically to exchange routes. And it's basically based on the concept of autonomous system. And depending on if you are changing those routes within or across autonomous system, is EVGP or IVGP. We use a bunch of features from it, like router reflectors, VGP and number, ECMP, default routes. And we are actually really leveraging the BRF one, the virtual routing and forwarding. This is similar to the um, uh, network namespaces, but just for layer three. So in a sense, it's just kind of routing table isolation. And the tool, as Daniel mentioned, uh, to leverage or to use uh, BGP is FRR, the one that we choose, which is a, a protocol suite. It's not just for BGP. It has other protocols. But in our case, we just focus on, on BGP. It's a Linux Foundation project. It was a fork from Quagga. And just as a, as a point there, in, in RHEL 8, uh, it was a bird was deprecated in favor of FRR. And it came with a, a shell. BTYSH, that is what the, uh, the agent will use to reconfigure FRR when needed. Um, I have there just one example, a random one for a configuration file for BGP. It's nothing to take a, a deep look at it. It just wanted to highlight the redistribute connected because that's kind of the feature we are going to, to, uh, to abuse or to leverage. Uh, basically, that means that uh, the local routes are being exposed. So in the node, everything we add to the devices is what it's going to be exposed outside. And that's what the agent will do to ensure that the VM's IPs are exposed outside. Uh, for the control plane, we move to a way where it's a, co a pure con a layer 3 control plane. Basically, we let's see. I'm sure it can be visible, but we have this kind of a spine lift topology where now the controllers of OpenStack can be moved in different racks instead of having to be on the same one. Thanks to this layer three, we make the triple O adaptation so that we kind of support this, this deployment and do the FRR configuration with, uh, with our needs. We have like a dedicated networks to connect the controllers and the computes to the, to the lift so that we ensure complete isolation there. And basically, we expose the, um, the BAPs of uh, OpenStack, the endpoints, just by adding them into the loopback interface in, in the controllers. And basically, then this is thanks to BGP uh, share for the infrastructure. And then a failover is as simple as adding this FIP to a different controller. And automatically, the, it will converge and it will detect the new location. I'm not going to give a lot of details about this because the talk is kind of focused on the data plane more than in the Colton plane, but just to give a, a heads up here. And of course, any question, is, we will try to handle it. For the data plane, as Tani mentioned, is the OVN BGP agent. What we have been working on, it's basically just a Python-based diamond that runs in every OpenStack node. It, just, uh, it, it is just connected to the OVN southbound database. And just to detect the events, so it's kind of reading only mode, detects the events that are uh, needed to figure out when we need to advertise and do to, to expose a VM. And it's basically leveraging a couple of things. On the one hand, as we explained, the, the FAR R uh, and BGP to announce the relevant IPs, in our case, the VMs and the load balancers VIPs, and also the kernel networking to redirect the traffic once it's in the node to the OVN overlay. It has some requirements, like, of course, we need FRR on the node so that we can use a BGP. It, we need to be connected to some peer. It's usually the lift, but it can also be the DC gateway, data center gateway, if need be. And we need to enable ARP and DP proxy so that uh, traffic can be redirected to, to the OVN overlay and the Linux provider bridge, the OBS provider bridge can answer to that. Uh, this is just a simple diagram of how it works, uh, basically highlighting again that the idea here was to not need to modify core OVN or Neutron at all, so just an addition and an extra agent there. It has two main components, the watcher and the driver, and it's built in a sense that you can 
plug in different watcher on different drivers depending on what you want to integrate with. For our case, we have a couple of drivers uh, supported now, like VGP and eVPN. And basically what the watcher does is to take a look at the audience of the database and especially focusing on the port binding table events. And when certain things happen, like usually like you boot up at the end or a load balancer VIP on the provider network or you associate a floating IP to them, this event is detected and then the watcher is calling the driver. And this driver is the one in charge of doing the needed actions to ensure that the VM is reachable in this node from that point. So the first thing to do is basically to ensure that we kind of wake up FRR to make the IP available from that point. So basically we just need to add this IP to one dummy device, dummy device created by the by the agent, so usually it's in a separate VRF so that it doesn't interfere with the routing, but it's just for the matter of uh, exposing the IP. So from that point, uh, all the infrastructure will know that this IP is reachable through this node. And then the second part of the, of the, of the work of this agent is to actually, once the traffic can, be, can reach this node, to ensure that this traffic is actually redirected to the OVN overlay. And to do that, we basically use a set of uh, kernel routing like IP routes and IP rules to redirect the traffic and then also need to to play with some with adding some extra OBS flow to the provider bridge from OBS so that we handle the proper MAC addresses. Uh, it's simple to add new watchers or drivers and for instance another one can be as Daniel mentioned this is not relying on Neutron or something so it's just taking a look at the OVN so you can add one driver for OVN Kubernetes for instance taking a look at the southbound TV, detecting the events. In you will need to do it in a slightly different way, maybe detecting only the events that you are interested in. And then maybe the driver needs to trigger some extra actions. We actually did a POC where we play a little bit around with uh, eVPF and XDP. And that's basically is like adding yet another box there of set of actions to be done to expose the VM from there. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit briefly the couple of uh, drivers that we have so far. We have the BGP1. This is basically in charge or main target is to expose the VMs and the load balancers on the provider networks or which has a floating API attached to them. One caveat here is that it doesn't have a, an API yet. So everything is exposed by default, everything that goes into the provider network. But it allows us to have like different VMs in different OpenStack Cloud being exposed with the same IP and then rely on BGP to load balance between them or to redirect the traffic to one or the other, the one that is available. <coughs> and it also allows us to do this without actually not needing to change the physical network configuration after when you want to add a new provider network. It's as simple as, uh, as that. So it also came with a, an option to also expose tenant networks, but with some limitations like traffic need to go through the networker node, there were no support for overlapping IPs, no API, so that's why we actually work also on the other driver, the eVPN mode, to kind of address some of those limitations. I'm going to explain that later on. Uh, actually, I already covered this in, in the previous one, but basically it's the watcher, the one detecting this type of events, either VMs or load balancer ports being created on this provider network or FIPS associated to them. This call the driver, the driver triggers the kernel, OBS, or FRR reconfigurations. And then the good thing is that the traffic goes directly to wherever the VM or the load balancer is without having to go through the networker node. Again, with one limitation for OVN, Octavia OVN load balancers, as there is no VM associated to them, the traffic needs to go through, the, through one of the networker nodes or the controllers. This is just an example of how did work kind of a step by step, like trying to zoom in a little bit in a couple of holes, couple of leaves. And basically uh, we have a device there, OVN VRF, that basically the device that the um, agent creates to be able to later on uh, advertise the IPs for BGP. And then there is a set of IP rules and a new routing table associated or kind of related to the VRX from, from OpenStack, which at the beginning are empty. And as soon as one VM is boot up, in, in this case host one, what we need to do is to, the agent, what it does is to add this IP to this OVN VRF device, which is kind of isolated. This actually makes FRR to, to advertise that IP. So from that point on, everyone in the, um, I mean, uh, 
and as we see, uh, any, anyone on the spine lift topology knows that that IP is reachable through that node, so the traffic knows how to reach that point, and then it, the agent is in search also of adding this IP rule, which basically says like all the traffic coming from everywhere that goes to this IP, 172, 24, 115. Uh, check how, what to do with this, with this by checking the VRX routing table. And this VRX routing table, it's for by now, uh, only has one kind of default route that send it to the VRX bridge. There is other routes uh, that are added there when exposing tenant networks, but for, for the floating IPs and, and IPs on the provider network, this is enough, so I'm not going to give more details on that. And yeah, that is just the kind of the traffic flow, like when you go from outside of another place, it will just come from one of the leaves, one of the NICs, and then through the kernel route, and it will be redirected there. But of course, if you have another VM on the same node, it doesn't need to go all that way. It will just go like east-west kind of traffic, and it will just uh, hit the internal uh, flows from, from VR int. Well, and for the other driver, I mean, the main idea for this one was instead of focusing on the public IPs or the provider network, was to focus on the possibility to expose the tenant networks and also allowing the overlapping siders, overlapping IPs, like meaning that two different tenants may want to expose the same kind of subnet uh, IPs, like 10.000-24 or something, and you don't need to synchronize them so that they can do whatever they want. They are advertising that at the end of the day in different kind of VXLAN IDs, so that's how it's segregated or tunneled. And this actually has an API. We are leveraging here the networking BGP as the API for this. I'm going to show you in the next slide. And there's one caveat at the moment that it, of course, needs to go through the networker node at the, at, at the time being because it, this is a limitation of ML2 OVN and how we, it's deploying OpenStack that the SNAP traffic is centralized, meaning the traffic to the tenant networks need to be injected through this uh, OVN uh, router gateway port that is connected to the provider network. But this driver basically allows us to interconnect different OpenStack clouds, either in the same data center or across data centers for different tenants. And I'm not sure if we're going to have time, but we have a demo at the end that we will, uh, it's already uploaded in case anyone wants to take a look. This is a little bit of the schema of, of how this works. The API, as I said before, is based on the networking BGP VPN, but it didn't come with uh, support for OVN, so we add some, some driver and the working progress patch is in there. Uh, basically, networking BGP VPN is just an API uh, or the plugin is an API that allows us to expose uh, neutron ports through their uh, networks and router and connect them through an eVPN or, or VPN. And the agent is using this. Uh, basically, we add just one a really simple uh, service plugin driver, which the only thing it does is to consider or to take note of this information about the VXLAN ID or VNI ID that is going to be used, and information about the autonomous system for the BGP that we need to use. And it just writes that into the OVN northbound DB in the network associated port there. This will uh, make, uh, this is automatically translated and, <coughs> and promoted to the OVN cellphone DB in the port binding table. And this is actually, again, in the same way as it was in the other driver, like trigger the, the OVN uh, BGP agent. So the watcher detects this event and then is in charge again of triggering or calling the driver so that it triggers the needed steps, which are slightly different for this, but this at the end of the day is same modules like FRR for advertisement and then kernel routing and OBS flows for traffic redirection. One thing to highlight here is, as you see, this is running on the OVN network gateway. As I said before, it doesn't, it doesn't go directly to the VM, but needs need to go through the networking node or, the, or whatever this CRLRP port is, which is the router network gateway. And then from that point, you inject it into the OVN overlay, and it goes uh, as in any east-west traffic through the GNIF channel to whatever the VM is. Uh, this is an example of how this works. Basically, the admin is the one creating the kind of BGP VPN, like associating a, a, a VNI, and then associating it to a tenant. Because that may, may imply some tweaking on the infrastructure, like if you have some VXLAN IDs that you want to use to interconnect things. And then the admin is the one in charge of assigning this to one tenant or another. And then the user, once it gets assigned this BGP VPN, it can 
freely assign it to each network or one router and automatically it will get assigned to all the networks connected to that virtual router. And with that, it's what basically triggers the VPN driver to do the needed kind of kernel networking tweaking. It has to do several things. It's based, as I've said before, in the BRF, BRF concept. So it creates one associated to this, uh, to this BNI ID, which need to create also some other devices to do the v VXLAN ID tagging and or in cap and decap. So it creates a bridge and a VXLAN device and connect it all together. And then it uses a best pair to actually connect this uh, BRF to the to the OVN overlay through the BRE, BREX bridge. Uh, then it adds the IP rules in this in the routing table associated to this BRF so that when the traffic goes uh, to this network, it's redirected to through that best device to the to the OVN overlay. And also in the other way, in traffic leaving the, the open stack, we need to also have some OBS flow at, at VRX so that if it's, or it's coming from this subnet, we, we redirected it to the VRF so that it came out to this kind of VXLAN ID instead of going out the normal path without encapsulation. Uh, and then just to advertise the IPs of the VMs, it's basically the same be uh, behavior as before. We just add these IPs into the, also a, a dummy device. I put it there, loopback 1001. And those IPs are the ones that get automatically uh, advertised through eVPN uh, by BGP in that channel. And back to you. OK, just real quick to wrap up and allow some couple of minutes to question for questions. So yeah, this project and the code, you can check it out. It's upstream. You can send reviews as you were used to do it with any other open dev project. So we have a Gerrit. You can submit your patches there, check out the code, whatever. Uh, there's plans to add more coverage, more open stack specific, and, and eventually move it under the neutron umbrella. Um, and there are a lot of information of the flows that Luis described with, with precise examples and you know detailed deep dives and even some videos at uh, that URL. So that's really interesting blog from Luis. And just some limitations and future directions real quick. It, of course, like, you know, we've been saying it all along. Um, the idea was to keep everything as it is. So, you know, there's no integration, uh, you know, with data path acceleration. So we are falling back to the kernel that it obviously, you know, uh, is not really compatible with things like SROV or OBS DPDK. Uh, we have things in, in mind, but we're happy to hear ideas. Uh, so far for the BGP mode, there's no API. It could be easily integrated and probably extended the API for neutral dynamic routing, although the, uh, the approach that we, we've taken is slightly different. And, you know, uh, traffic to tenant networks is still traversing the gate. We know that that's, some, that's how, we, how Neutron works today for SNAP traffic. Um, future direction, you know, just coming up with an API, trying to make distributed north-south routing to avoid traversing this extra hub that I was talking about, and maybe moving some of the pieces that we have uh, to OVN, to core OVN, like the NDP or our proxy, you know, to make it, or, or even even the, the the routing part, move it to, to OVN so that it can be uploaded at some point. Uh, some other interesting things, uh, eBPF and XDP, Luis has been playing with that, accelerating the ingress part so it doesn't need to go to the kernel. And that this is pretty much it. No time for the demo. <laughs> uh, we just have a few seconds left, so please feel free to ask any questions. And thank you so much for, for coming. It's, we really appreciate that. Thank you. Right, just let me repeat the question for the, for the audience here. 
so the question is about performance and scale. Have we taken any uh, measures about um, you know, IP advertisement, the time that it takes for it to be propagated and failover, and how many routes we are able to take and whatnot. So we have done just very limited tests. We haven't tested this at performance uh, at scale. So we have just tested the failover time. It's below a millisecond. It depends really how you configure BFD. So BFD, you can parameterize it to, you know, for different convergence. So there's certain tuning that you can still do. But uh, unfortunately, we don't, we don't know like uh, what is the actual scale, how many routes we can. I guess that it depends on a lot of factors. But yeah, I, I don't have a, like a, uh, we don't have a, an answer now. We have a colleague, though, that did some testing, not with this type of deployment, but to check like BGP and this stuff. Uh, it was more for the open stack, for the open SIF and Kubernetes use case. And it got uh, really nice numbers related to the scale and the amount of routes that you can expose that it was kind of really nice handle. It was more like the number of peers were not affecting that much unless you go crazy big. So, but nah, in this type of environment, we didn't test it. Yeah, it was focused on OpenShift, but using FRR and the same type of approach. Yeah, there was no real bottleneck observed. That's a good point, Luis. Thanks for reminding. Thanks. Sorry, I cannot what? hear. <laughs> you, you have the mic there, but we can try. Oh, thank you. Looks like he's working. <laughs> How far is the uh, integration of IP, uh, IPv6 version 6? Integration of? How, is, how far is the integration of IP version 6? Uh, it's already working with IPv6, too. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's, I mean, we give it a try, and it's actually, when doing the rules, it's exposing both of them, like IPv4 and IPv6. And that's why, actually, we need to enable NDP to make, like, similar to, to, to IRP4 for the proxy, so we give it a try with IPv6, and it was kind of working. We didn't mess with the performance either, but it was working fine. It is the same approach, but instead yeah. of using our proxy, we're using NDP proxy. And obviously, there's no floating IP because there's no such a thing in yeah. Neutron for IPv6. But otherwise, yeah, it should and, be working for IPv6. we were IPv6. using BGP and number in, in this configuration to use IPv6 to distribute the routes for IPv4, so yeah. Thanks. There was others somewhere. Oh, there's a line there. Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, we've got a similar setup, but we don't use OVN. We use Calico. Uh, the drawbacks are it doesn't support a lot of the neutron semantics. Uh, some of the things we picked up. Uh, um, you mentioned at some point you're putting the local IP address on the on the local host interface. Uh, we found that putting it on a dummy interface is a little bit better because you can set, uh, you can turn the dummy interface, you can down it, you can change the MTU on it. It's it's a little bit less intrusive. So we, we made a Fabric Zero interface for that. Um, I took a look at the neutron semantics and I think the reason why there's this um, reliance on the networker node is because the um, ML2 driver, uh, the type, the networking types are all assuming L2 adjacency. So it's uh, uh, most of the, the, the types there. So I think, uh, if, uh, I might be wrong here, but I think a new uh, neutron type is needed so that you can flag that the provider network is an L L3 fabric and you can route directly to it. You don't need to go via the networker now, node. Um, anyway, that's, that's uh, most of the stuff. The other things is, yeah, a lot of the DHCP and network auto configuration is still not really mature in this space. So it's still something we need to do on, uh, we need to put uh, uh, on all of our machines. Is there any help in that respect that's, that's already been done? I didn't catch the part with DHCP. So, so with DHCP and those kind of things, you can push the normal L2 configuration, but there's no um, auto config for for uh, BGP routers yet. Right. Yeah. Like actually, with OVN, the HCP would be served locally. Yeah. So it would be handled by no, OVN no, controller I mean, locally. I mean, when the hosts get provisioned. 
because oh the provisioning time yes ah okay yeah so so that that's kind of a problem at, at our stage we need to hard code the the or push the BGP uh, stuff using custom configuration but there's no right. way to discover that remotely through the network yet yeah yeah so far we're relying on a uh, the top of rack being the next hop for all the traffic going out. Uh, so we are not importing any routes, and we're just exposing, we're just advertising. But that's a good point. So we are relying on a single, uh, a predefined gateway for all the traffic coming out the node, or actually two, you can do, um, you know, what we're doing today is ECMP. So typically you would have two NICs and you will, you'd have an ECMP yeah. route outgoing. So you don't need to, to know exactly because you're going to reach the top of rock anyway. Yeah. So the, you're moving the problem up to the top of rock yeah. and beyond. I think our only but thing that the top of rack exports is the default route in any case. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Thank you, good point, thanks. Uh, yeah, thank you at first for this uh, topic. And I've been waiting a lot and long time for this feature to come, and thanks for working on that. Uh, I've built OpenStack installation with uh, layer three routing in the underlay for quite some years, and that I was waiting for that. Uh, what I'm wondering is um, the management of the switches to get the BGP session set up. Are there any facilities in the project? Do you envision something like that coming, or is this still something I have to do by hand? Yeah, that at least for now it was out of the scope okay. of, of this. Yeah. But what we, I mean, for playing around with this, we have like a set of Ansible playbooks to set yeah. it up, but it was more like a POC kind of yeah. thing, not like something for production to configure the switches and, and this kind of thing. So yeah, that we didn't look Thanks. at it. Yet. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Thanks. Then I would just continue. Um, my question was the EVPN feature sounded a little bit like the OVN interconnect feature that it has on its own to connect to different OVN deployments. Is there overlap that you intentionally go there or is it just two different solutions for the same problem in space? Uh, to us, to us, them is similar, but I think it's slightly different because for the interconnect is more like for the whole tenant, right? For the whole open stack and this to kind of segregate the tenant for a different VXLAN ID, right? Mm -hmm. So I think there's some limitation, but we actually were taking a look at the interconnect to see if that was good for us, for, for this kind of case. And we actually wanted to use it, but we didn't find out how to to fit in, in all the- You mean the, the OVN or the interconnect? Yes. I, th I think you meant the OVN interconnect. Yeah. Yeah. But that's using transit switches. Yeah. So you need to, yeah. But you need to agree on the on the siders and all because you need to share part of the of the networking. Mm -hmm. So you will create a transit switch where the two cluster will connect. Yeah. It's uh, actually we were we've been looking into that to extend to scale a little bit better. Like when you go certain uh, you know after a, it, it essentially you would have two OVN control planes, but you need some management to do between them. Yeah, we haven't thought about that in the context of BGP, but it could be it could be interesting because you can you can advertise the transit switches to um, routes to them. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you.